Hello and welcome back. My name is Harris Bard once again for Pond Life Aquatics and in today's video another species spotlight where we will be discussing the Neo Caridina davidi, otherwise known as the cherry shrimp. In this video I will be discussing a brief history of when they were first scientifically identified, going on to how they were initially introduced to the aquarium trade, the development of their beautiful colors that we have come to know and love in the aquarium trade, and then I'll be discussing how I personally think you should be keeping your Neo Caridina at home. Let's get into it. Neo Caridina davidi are native to freshwater streams in Taiwan. While often referred to as cherry shrimp in the trade, this name actually applies to the red color morph of the species. In the wild, Neo Caridina typically exhibit a green brown coloration, providing camouflage in their natural environments. They were first scientifically identified in 1904 by the French carcinologist Eugene Louis Bouvier. Interestingly, these shrimp have relatively short lifespans of approximately 10 to 15 months. Although originating in Taiwan, Neo Caridina have been introduced to other parts of the world, including Japan and Hawaii. Surprisingly, populations have even been observed in thermally polluted canals in places like Poland and Germany, likely as a result of unintentional release from aquariums. This highlights the adaptability of these shrimp and their ability to thrive in a variety of different conditions. To me, this articulates just how easily these shrimp can be adapted to any kind of aquarium and is indicative to their popularity in the hobby as a whole. Although Bouvier initially identified them in 1904, they only became available in the trade widely in the 1990s, initially with the first available variant, the red cherry shrimp. However, they were initially misidentified and sold under different names such as Neo Caridina heteropoda or Neo Caridina cf zangiagensis before eventually being reclassified as Neo Caridina davidi. It is believed that the first recorded introductions of Neo Caridina as an invasive species occurred in Hawaii as early as 1991. The journey of Neo Caridina davidi into the aquarium trade began in China around 1989 when they were first discovered and brought back to Taiwan by a group of hobbyists. The wild variation of the species didn't initially garner much attention in the aquarium trade with their drab green brownish colours. However, these hobbyists started to notice the development of pinkish hues in their baby shrimp and he began to selectively breed them which led to the emergence of the first colour variation, the red cherry shrimp. The popularity of this shrimp exploded in the aquarium trade and although initially costs for these shrimp were relatively high, the ease of breeding them in your own home aquarium made them extraordinarily desirable. Naturally occurring colour mutations and huge amounts of selective breeding in the species led to the huge number of different colour variations we see today. In our aquarium store alone we have yellow shrimp, orange, green, blue and even black shrimp on the agenda. Occasionally we'll even get really species in which are clear bodied with coloured patches. It's worth noting the importance that hobbyists played in developing all the different colours that we see in Neo Caridina Davidi. Hobbyists have been responsible for a huge swathe of the colours with really intense selective breeding programmes which resort to things like culling of undesirable species and keeping bloodlines as pure as possible to create colour morphs that will be hugely popular in the aquarium trade. To put how popular colour variations can be in perspective, when neon yellow variants were first created by Taiwanese farms successfully on an industrial level, over 50 million Neo Caridina were exported in a single year. This drive for new colour morphs is extremely popular 
even for small hobbyists, because if they can stabilize a strain of coloration, they can make huge amounts of money. For example, in 2007, when a single color morph known as a chocolate shrimp emerged, a single specimen of this morph could be sold for as high as 1,000 Singapore dollars per piece. Although this cost seems extortionate to a single person, for a shrimp farmer, a single clutch of eggs can produce over 30 baby shrimp. So to put that in perspective, if you had a breeding pair, you could multiply your profits on a huge scale. Now, although keeping shrimp can be extraordinarily profitable, if that's something you're into, I have never personally been involved in mass breeding of shrimp. I personally like to keep Neocaridina for their beautiful colors, their vibrant personalities, and just their ease of use in putting them into any sort of aquarium. I personally first started keeping cherry shrimp around 10 years ago when a customer first came into our shop and asked us if we could stock them. I personally had never kept them before and had never kept them in our shop before. Having watched them while we held on to them for this customer, I fell in love with their behaviors and their vibrancy and was very surprised to see that they were buried when they first came into the shop. This was my first experience of seeing how easy it is to breed Neocaridina or cherry shrimp. Now, we weren't doing anything particularly special to breed cherry shrimp in our shop. Their parameters are extraordinarily diverse and they can be kept very, very easily in pretty much any home aquarium. Now, just to go through their parameters, just to give you some idea, they can be kept between anywhere from 6.5 pH to 8.0. They prefer temperatures between 20 degrees and 27 degrees, which puts them ideally in that community sort of aquarium range. Their general hardness is between seven and 15. Their carbonate hardness is between two and 10. And their TDS or total dissolved solids, it's anywhere between 180 and 450. Weirdly enough for us in London, this puts them in ideal range to be breeding. My aquarium here that sits on my desk is filled with tap water and regularly water changed. And I keep my nitrates, nitrites and ammonia very low and under control at all times. Now, it just so happens that the general hardness, the total dissolved solids and the carbonate hardness are ideal for keeping Neocaridina. And as I've previously mentioned, if you don't have water that's ideal for this, you can easily use things like RO or water capture like rainwater to then remineralize using things like Denali King Shrimp Salt. Now, I have four aquariums at home at the moment. In every single one of them, I am keeping some form of Neocaridina. Now, although these very easy to breed shrimp don't need an awful lot to survive and thrive, there is some things that I personally think make their lives a lot better. If you've watched any of my aquascapes on this channel, then you know that I personally love a densely planted and beautiful aquarium. This aquarium in particular, my desktop one, is currently breeding a hell of a lot of cherry shrimp. I added in an additional six cherries in the past few weeks. What I didn't realize was that one of my females was already buried when I put them in. Now this tank is just full of tiny little babies. Now, if you're going to plant up an aquarium at home for them, I would strongly recommend going for bushy and vibrant plants. I found plants like Limnophilia sessiflora that I have growing in this aquarium behind me, or things like Hornwort, which I'm not currently growing, but have done hugely successful tanks with in the past, or Rotala rotundifolia, or anything that has a densely packed leaf package so that the shrimp have somewhere to hide. Additionally, like with my Cardina bee shrimp tank, I would strongly suggest having some sort of moss, and if you haven't got moss, then a densely packed carpeting plant. Having this large surface area and fluffy areas will allow for microbiomes to build up, which fry from your Neocaridina will lovingly eat on throughout their lifespans. Having some hardscape that's naturally occurring is also hugely beneficial from rocks to primarily wood. Wood builds up algae as time goes on and 
your Neo Caridinas will love to feed on it and it will hugely benefit them over the long run. And although I do love to supplement food for my cherries just because I like watching them feed, for example, I have a blue algae stick just in the tank behind me at the moment feeding them on, they don't generally need a lot of food. And if you give them an ecosystem that's vibrant and packed with life like the one I have behind me, generally you don't need to feed them and you will find that they will breed very happily. You don't need to have a complete shrimp setup like this to keep Neo Caridinas at home. Cherries will very happily live and thrive in aquariums with some somewhat predatory fish. Although you can keep them with community very non-aggressive species like Nerite snails or keeping them alongside Ostacinclus or even Corydorus, you won't have any fatalities that way. You can keep them alongside things like Rummy Nose Tetra, Bentosi Tetra, anything that won't fit a fully formed adult into its mouth. Although the shrimp fry will occasionally be predated, particularly in unfurnished aquariums where plants aren't left to grow abundantly like the one behind me or the other aquariums that I've shown on this channel, fry will survive and grow up. I've even previously kept cherry shrimp in aquariums happily with Siamese fighting fish where they have had huge amounts of fry and grown on into adolescent and adulthood and then continue to reproduce. If you create an aquarium effectively, you can create an ecosystem where the fry will almost act as morbidly a live food for some of your bigger aquarium fish, but they will still be able to maintain their populations without them exploding. One thing to say about keeping Neo Caridina is if you don't have an awful lot of space for an aquarium at home, you can keep them in aquariums as small as five liters, which make them ideal for desktop aquariums. To put it in perspective, this aquarium here is 50 liters. You could keep it in something 10 times smaller than this and still have a relatively large hive where they will happily breed and reproduce in huge numbers. And it's why when you look on YouTube and see all of these nano vase setups or all-in-one ecosystems that other aquascapers like to create, they will always use something like a Neo Caridina to populate these ecosystems. Now, if you want to set up a dedicated breeding space for Neo Caridina, I would strongly recommend using a filtration system like the Denali Corner Filter, which is specifically designed to keep shrimp with. It is extraordinarily safe to not suck in fry, hence why in this aquarium at the moment, I've got so many babies. Or you can use something like a bio sponge attached to an air pump, which will also increase the amount of bioflora in the aquarium, which will give your shrimp loads of food to feed on and you'll often see them in aquariums feeding on these sponges quite happily. Additionally, I have talked about this in the past, giving your Neo Caridina botanicals, particularly in the forms of things like tapa or almond leaf, can really help bolster their immune systems. And I will talk about this slightly later on, when they have certain parasites or fungal infections, giving them things like almonds and catapa can really help bolster their immune system. So when you remove the specimen that is exhibiting these issues, it can help prevent the spread to the rest of your hive. Now, Neo Caridina are generally a quite hardy species and don't suffer from too many different diseases. However, there are a few things that we as aquarists should be aware of when keeping Neo Caridina. The most major one is something called white ring of death, which is a molting issue when there is improper water parameters or a calcium deficiency and your shrimp cannot effectively shed its shell, which leads to early death. Avoiding this is largely simple by keeping your water parameters under control with regular water changing or by having a very developed ecosystem. Alternatively, if you have a calcium deficiency, there are plenty of different salts that you can add to your aquarium. I personally like to use things like Denali King Shrimp Salt, as you can just add it into any kind of softened water and it will give you ideal parameters for your Neo Caridina. Aside from White Ring of Death, they are also susceptible to things like fungal infections or parasitic worms and you must carefully observe your shrimp on a regular basis to make sure that you are not harboring any parasites. There are various different treatments available in the trade to treat these diseases, however, 
I personally think that if you find that you have a parasite within your population, it's important to cull the particular specimen that is harboring them. Removing them from the aquarium will ultimately protect the rest of your hive. Additionally, with new diseases appearing like shrimp plague in North America that has hugely affected the wild populations of things like crawfish, we must make sure that if we start to see exhibiting behaviours of things like shrimp plague in our Neocaridina that we do not allow it to spread throughout the populations in the aquarium trade. This is just a continuation of the moral obligations that we have as shrimp keepers and fish keepers in general not to allow diseases to spread into the wild as it can hugely affect wild populations in general. And that's it for our species spotlight on Neocaridina dibidi or cherry shrimp. If you feel like I've missed out on anything, then please leave a comment below and I'll be happy to discuss and potentially do update videos in the future. I really love making these species spotlights and the responses I've had to the last one was really heartening. I wasn't sure how people would respond to these more scientific or historical videos looking at one specific species, but if I get a good response to this one, then I will definitely carry on in the future. So if you liked it, then please subscribe and like this video and it will show me that this is something that people want me to continue on this channel. But for now, that is all for this week and I will see you again next time for this pond life.